I need to come clean about something. I use a bunch of different video editors, kind of depending on my mood, but mostly depending on like what it is that I'm recording and how I feel like editing. But I got this question from somebody whose first name I wish I knew. I'm losing track of all of the software we can use. There are so many great options. Ecamm, Descript, ScreenFlow. Which is best for what? Or is it more complicated than that? It is It is more complicated than that. But I thought this would make a great video to put here on my channel right now today. It is August 2023. So anything can change. But let's talk about what video editors work best for what, depending on what you're doing and how you like to edit. And this is all basically my opinion. If you're new here, my name is Meredith Marsh. And here on this channel, I create videos to help you look good, sound good and feel good on camera so that you can build your thriving online business with YouTube. I'm recording this video right now with Descript, which is a video and audio recording and editing software. I've made a few videos on using Descript in my workflow and I'll link to those down below. I have a bit of a complicated relationship with Descript as a piece of software because in theory it's the perfect piece of video creation software, especially if you create talking head videos or talking head and you know some screen recording videos. But sometimes it doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. I love Descript when Descript is doing Descript things. I, it, it just really irks me when Descript is not doing Descript things. I don't want to get into the, like the Meredith's pet peeves zone in this video, but I like Descript because you can record into it, transcribing your video as you are recording, and it makes it really easy to edit when you're editing out the actual words in the document, rather than having to pick things apart in the timeline, which is typically a, a pretty big learning curve when you're learning how to edit videos as a total beginner. So for basic editing, it works great. For more advanced editing, it's, it's really not advanced editing and that's okay. As I'm editing this in Descript, I wanna just interject something real quick Number one, to show how easy it is to, when you're editing IndieScript, to just hit record and add add something else to your video. Of course, my lighting is different. I'm wearing a coat in my office in August because it's freezing down here. My air conditioning is going. My washing machine is going in the other room. I don't know if you can hear that stuff, but I wanted to say that. And also, even though you can clean your edit up really well with the dock, in Descript and not have to go down to the timeline. You still have to use the timeline to like clean things up because if you make a lot of mistakes in your videos, a lot of things that you have to cut out because you said the wrong thing or you restarted your sentence 17 times. It's easy to find those mistakes and delete them using the words on the screen, but you still have to go down to the timeline and fiddle with those cuts to kind of trim them up a little bit and make the whole edit a little bit smoother. And if you're just doing basic editing, that might just be good enough for you to just be done with your edit. But what I've been using Descript for is to create that rough cut and then export the timeline to Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit. That's what I'm gonna do with this video because then I kind of like do the Descript easy rough cut stuff and then move into an advanced editor to do the advanced stuff. So I'll talk a little bit more about that Let's get back to the edit. ScreenFlow is meant to be a screen recording editing program. You can record your camera and your screen and everything all at the same time, which makes it just like insanely useful for creating tutorial type how to screen recording content because it's easy to record and the editing features are really robust. I just published a like complete screen flow beginning to end like my workflow um, a couple of days ago and editing a really good, easy to watch, easy to follow screen recording. There's a lot of tiny little minute details that go into it 
that you can do with ScreenFlow. They take time to learn and figure out and do even once you do have it learned and figured out. Um, but I think ScreenFlow is the best software for that. So if I'm recording a mostly tutorial style screen recording video, I'll just do the whole thing in ScreenFlow. When you're editing in ScreenFlow though, you're completely editing in a timeline. There's no text-based editor like you have with Descript. So if you're creating videos that are very screen recording heavy, like mostly screen recording. Definitely go with a tool that is meant for screen recording and screen recording editing, like ScreenFlow, which is Mac only. There is also Camtasia, that's Mac and PC. I haven't used it, so I can't say that I necessarily recommend it, but that's kind of the go-to if you have a Windows machine. If you're doing mostly and many screen recording style videos. And since this commenter mentioned Ecamm, Ecamm is not an editor. Ecamm can record and stream. So if I do a live stream, sometimes I will be using Ecamm. Most of the time I will be using Ecamm for that. I did use StreamYard for a little bit. Now I'm trying to just stick with Ecamm. It's a Mac only software, but it's not an editor. However, I guess I'm just going to interject something in between uh, all of the different things I talk about in this video, which is fine. One thing about Ecamm to keep in mind versus another piece of software is when you create with Ecamm, you can have overlays, graphics, images, share your screen, have your screen and your face like in the corner. And you do that as you're recording. Whereas with something like ScreenFlow or any other editor, you're doing all that stuff after the fact. So if you really have a really good planned out video and you know the text you want to have on the screen, images that you want to have on the screen, you could set that all up in Ecamm and record with all of that stuff. And you literally just like add it in as you're talking, as you go, as you're recording. And then when you're done recording, you have that file. I am not ever like that prepared to record a video to where I just have everything ahead of time. I like to just add it in, in, in an editor, but that is something you could think about doing with Ecamm if that kind of workflow might work for you. It's sort of like um, putting together a live stream or a live presentation, but it's just, it could just be a regular recording. In the last month or so, I started using Adobe Premiere Pro again after a really long hiatus. Adobe has been really pumping out some actually useful AI features in all of their programs, and they now have text-based editing in Premiere Pro. So as a Descript user who also pays for an Adobe Creative Cloud license, that was very intriguing to me. So I've played around with it a little bit. I will probably create a rough draft of this video in Descript and then bring it into Premiere Pro and then edit from there. I also wanted to be able to do some like fancy-ish effect type things. Kelsey over on the Premiere Gal channel came out with this like effects pack. I don't know what you call it. It's a whole Premiere Pro thing that you install into Premiere Pro and it is full of the like zoom in, zoom out, and it just makes it really easy to be fancy, if that makes sense. And I wanted to play with that. So I had to dust off Premiere Pro, update it to the newest version, and then reacquaint myself with the program so that I could install those. And I've been using those in my videos um, here and there a little bit. Fun fact, if you're running um, a computer that is, let's just say underpowered, let's just say it has eight gigabytes of RAM, for example, which is where I was at up until a couple days ago. Premiere Pro is gonna be like a real hog on your system and doing any kind of effects and fancy stuff is going to be like double the hogginess of your system. If you wanna do fancy stuff, use Premiere Pro and um, 
edit faster and export faster and use these kinds of effects. You're probably going to want to have a system with at least like 16 gigabytes of RAM or um, I have a whopping 32 now. I have quadrupled my RAM. Everything just operates like a total breeze. But that's something to consider if you're looking at editing software you may also need to analyze your actual hardware and figure out if this even is going to be possible for you. Premiere Pro is, I think, considered like an advanced professional video editing tool. Aside from basic edits in iMovie, Premiere Pro is what I learned to edit on. So um, it kind of feels good to be like back in the space where I learned to edit. But it is advanced. So there is a learning curve. What I always say, and I've always said this about video editors, if you really like to edit and you don't like record a video and then dread having to open it up and figure out how to use the software, if you like it, then learn to use a good program like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro if you're on a Mac, which is another professional level advanced editor. I used that for a little bit. I only went back to Premiere Pro uh, because I wanted to use Kelsey's uh, effects stuff and I wanted to check out Adobe's AI stuff. You could also look at DaVinci Resolve, which is also considered an advanced like professional level editor, but it's completely free. If you like editing and you like learning editing and you want to learn editing, start teaching yourself on an advanced program. If you don't, then don't use an advanced program. Use something like Descript or iMovie if you're on a Mac, which is completely free. And for being as simple and basic and beginner as it is, there actually is a lot of really good features in iMovie. For being a free video editor, it's packed with features. You can also look at Filmora, which is something that I used a little bit when I first started because it seemed like it was a popular software, but I didn't like it. It was, it seemed really clunky to me and I already knew how to use Premiere Pro. So I was like, why am I using this clunky software? But I've heard people say they absolutely love using Filmora. CapCut is also an option for editing your videos. CapCut has a mobile app, an iPad app. Uh, you can do it on your desktop in a browser and there's a regular desktop app. And it is also packed with features and it's completely free. And it's owned by or created or distributed by ByteDance, which is also the company that owns TikTok. Yes, there are a lot of video editors out there. If you use one that I haven't mentioned, drop it down in the comments because I'm just kind of going off of the things that I'm familiar with or the things I've used or the things my clients and students have mentioned. If you're trying to figure out what tool to use for what, what editor to use for what, it's like, kind of like buying a car, you know, there are certain things about the way that it feels when you're using it that might actually be the deciding factor in what you choose to go with. The video editor that you choose to use is not going to determine your success or failure on YouTube because success on YouTube really comes down to just one thing. You have to publish videos. You pretty much can't go wrong if you choose something that you enjoy using and doesn't become a hindrance or a roadblock to you creating videos to begin with. So use whatever is going to help you get that done. Because creating a library of binge-worthy videos is the most powerful way to grow your YouTube channel and build a thriving YouTube channel. When you become bingeable on YouTube and YouTube is pushing your videos out for you, you will attract new viewers and subscribers, clients and customers every time you hit publish. And if you're not totally sure where to start with building a binge-worthy YouTube channel, I have a video um, really showing exactly how to do that in a really simplified way. So I look forward to hearing about your video editor preferences down in the comments and I'll see you over here.